Reject. Cool. OK, hello, Rejectures. Thanks for having me. Um, today, we'll talk about image processing. Um, this summer, I finished my master's degree at the HDW Berlin. And then I took some courses in image processing. And today, I want to share some of those exercises there um, with you and general knowledge in that field I, I gained. Um, as always at universities, we were told to do our exercises in Java. And it was great fun doing it in JavaScript. Uh, the reaction of the professors was quite cool. Um, one guy even bought a new book about JavaScript um, to, to refresh his memories about JavaScript, which was probably 10 years old or something. So it was great fun playing around with workers, the canvas itself, and all those new features, and growing with them at the same time. Because at one point, you would have it just in Canary, and next day, it would be live on all Chrome browsers in the world and other browsers as well. <laughs> so I will talk about these four fields, binarization, segmentation, face localization, and pixel measuring. Um, for you to follow along, I created this website, and I just sent out a tweet with a reject.js um, hash so that, you can check out, uh, yeah, so that you can follow along in your own pace if you want, because everything is there as well, also to play around. So let's start with binarization. Binarization is the technique to take a normal pixel image and create a binary image out of it, meaning it only has zeros and ones. You can visualize it like this, that it's black and white. There are several use cases for it. One old one, faxes. <laughs> we probably don't need that anymore. But digitalizing text is quite important if you don't have um, Capetchas doing it for you. And counting can also be something cool out of it. And it's also the basis for a lot of other image processing techniques. So let me explain you how it works. We start with the source image, and then we can apply a threshold, saying everything which is uh, darker than the threshold should be black, and everything which is lighter should be white, or one and zero, as I just said. Um, this is not very flexible, because our images will have different lightning situation, uh, yeah, lightness levels. So a better, uh, a better solution is the adaptive thresholding. Adaptive thresholding, um, here we see it works quite good with this example. Um, there's also a demo on the website to play around yourself. It looks at the histogram of the image and tries to find a good mean value between the, all the pixels there, <laughs> finding a good center. Next, I want to talk about segmentation. Segmentation um, can look like this. Here it's visualized. We found all those separate elements in that image. And we have several use cases like, again, text detection. This is kind of the next step after binarization for text detection. Um, we can use it in medical imaging, um, for example, to find tumors or um, to, to measure the, the size of tissue. And it can also be used in video surveillance. Let me show you this demo for that. Whoops. So, let me reload. Here we have an animated demo, it's also on the website, um, going through it. This is basically a flood fill, I don't know if you guys know it, um, going through the image pixel by pixel, and as soon as we find a black pixel, uh, like the, the one and the zero one thing where we talked about in binarization. And then we start to explore that before we continue and see if there's neighboring other black pixels around there. And this goes through the whole image until we found all those, um, all those separate elements in there. there. I also compared two techniques there because uh, flood filling can be done either by, by uh, always taking the last element from the stack, like you, you look you start at one pixel, then you put all the neighboring pixels on the stack, and then see if they are black as well. And this stack grows and grows and grows, and either you can take the one at the end or at the start, 
and it, this will influence how big your stack will be. So memory-wise, this is important to choose the right one. As you can also see on the left side, there's a render time measurement, and it's showing the stack size, the maximum stack size. So you can see that um, this breadth-first technique um, has a stack of 119, while the, the maximum stack, while the other technique... Oh, I didn't name it the same up here. <laughs> breadth is Q, <laughs> and... The other technique depth is stacking. Um, so you can compare, check it out with different images. And there's a third technique. Let's speed up the animation here. Fill. Um, which is called sequential. Um, and this technique, I, I like to see it as a kind of the pirate technique. You, um, it's kind of like a pirate driving a ship. And then he sees, a, he sees an island, and he enters there, and he's like, ah, yeah, this will be my island. And then another pirate comes from the other side to that island, and they will both explore the island, and suddenly they will realize, oh, I'm not the first. This is not mine um, alone. And then they have to argue who will have this, this land, this island. And oh, this example doesn't show it that good. Let's see another one. For example, this one. We have several pirates who started to, to think this is theirs, and eventually the blue one wins. So this is going through the image line by line and just starts to, to label regions. Okay. <laughs> and this can be the, first, uh, the second step on the way for character rec uh, recognition. Let me show you a demo for that. Um, here we have those separated images uh, or pieces inside of this scan. And as you can see, um, you can check out the algorithm yourself if you want to dig deeper into that. Um, uh, this is kind of the natural next step to, to try to find similar um, things inside of this image. So now let's talk about face localization, different topic. You probably all know, heard the term face recommend, uh, recognition. And so actually this technique or this whole thing is split into two parts. It's face localization and face recognition. Face localization answers the question where. Where is a person in the, uh, where is a face inside of the image? So it just scans for faces. And face recognition, on the other hand, describes um, or tries to find out who is this face, who does it belong to. And today I will show you an algorithm for face localization. And this algorithm is a very general one, which can also be used to, to find all kinds of things, not just faces. But we, the demo will be faces. It's called the Har-like feature algorithm. And it works like this. So check this picture of me. We will just focus on the lightness of it. Um, as you can see, the, the forehead is lighter than my eye area, if we sum it up. And the bridge of my nose is lighter than the areas left and right, because it's further back, right? Um, also, my, my chin area is lighter than my mouth area, because there's dark shadows in there. Horror-like features, uh, feature detector... Um, uses that, these lightness changes, um, and it describes these four kinds of features. The, oh, sorry. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> the vertical one, the horizontal one, the three in a row, and the diagonal one. And green means more lightness, red means less lightness. And so it applies those features to a face, for example. Um, and the, several of those features together form a classifier. And this classifier then, uh, well, a real, a real life classifier would have thousands of those features in there. Um, but this was a simple one for explanation purposes. And this classifier would run over an image and see where there's a, the highest, um, yeah, where, the, where those light changes match. And if it's a good classifier, it will find faces there. See that the, uh, or note that the second face wasn't detected. Um, this is probably because the face is too small in comparison to the other one, so the classifier doesn't get it. 
So um, to, to detect all the different sizes of faces, we have to use different size classifiers. And to also detect side-tilted faces, um, we need to have a rotated classifier run over the image. There's nice optimization processes to, to calculate this really efficiently, and I added some links on the website for you to, for further reading. And I just fell in love with this technique. I thought it's like a super cool <laughs> technique to do this. Um, so as I mentioned before, the, a real classifier has thousands of, of those features in there, and, um, and those are created by using trainers. For example, the AdoBoost algorithm. I also provide a link for that for further reading. Um, so these are algorithms using a big set of, of test images and machine learning to create really strong classifiers. Um, I also read that, for example, the OpenV, uh, OpenVC library has a trainer in there, and I think somebody also wrote something to port them to JavaScript. Um, so I want to show you a, a, a different usage for it. Um, so this guy, Martin Chiersich, he wrote a classifier for the fist um, and created this HTML5 demo with it. And <laughs> Stop. <laughs> and go. So it's, it's turkey, but it's, I think it shows the, the basis. And the, um, of course, you would have to optimize it way more to make it really, really useful, but I think it's already really impressive what we can do these days with web, uh, the webcam access and, and yeah, those classifiers. So that was face localization. Finding faces uh, where they are or finding in general objects by creating those classifiers. And as a last step, I want to... Oh, I'm a bit early. <laughs> um, I want to tell you a personal story for this last thing. Um, uh, currently, uh, as a freelancer, I'm creating a web interface, and I found myself tons and tons of time um, going to Photoshop just to measure distances for a pixel-perfect interface. I, I guess you guys also did that, or some of you. I hope I'm not the only one. <laughs> but this is, I think it's, it's super lame to go to Photoshop for that, but I, it's the best measuring tool I had so far. Well, I found a different one, but it's super expensive, 50 bucks or something, like just for that purpose. And, <laughs> okay, if I only use Photoshop for that, it would also be super expensive. Um, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's expens quite expensive. It's also a tool set, so there are several other tools which I wouldn't need. And um, it only runs on OS X. So I thought, I work in the browser, and I want to measure things in the browser, so let's create this in the browser. So today I want to introduce to you the Dimensions Chrome extension. And here's a link for that. Please type it in or I'll send it to you and then I'll show you how it works. <laughs> so this is the product page you will find with that link. And here's a live demo in there to try out how it works. And we can, you can install it from the store. I also recommend you to, how do I get here? Let's see. To add a shortcut for it, you can do this in the extensions menu and then down right. For example, Alt D. And then you can start, it's also up here in the right corner and activate it with Alt D. And you can start to measure all the things on websites. <laughs> if you want to measure um, your... Let's go back here. If you want to measure mockups, you can just drop them in the browser and use this plugin. Um, and the cool thing, it's also open source, so I'm looking forward to people who want to contribute to port it also to the other great browsers out there. Um, and how does it work? Well. Since we're talking about image processing, I, of course, started out to try to use image processing for it. And the first steps in the direction of, um, of edge detection didn't work that good, because that was the first thought I want to detect when there's an edge. And so I stepped back a bit and said, like, hmm, what, what else can I do? 
Oh yeah, I have a demo. That's <laughs> how it actually works. Um, so I cr just create a grayscale image of the of the screen. Um, it's handy that in Chrome I can use a I can take a screenshot of the things on screen. While scrolling, I have to wait until scrolling stops and then take a new screenshot. And then I use this flood filling technique I explained before and just start out, see what pixel is there where the mouse is and compare the neighboring pixels and go in all directions, like you can see here, until I hit a really different color. Uh, so there's a small uh, noise ratio in there. Of course, for gradients, it doesn't work, but Luckily, we have flat design right now, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's it, and that's way too early. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Reject.